Yeah, uh, Rakesh. Yeah, Rakesh, can you hear me? Rakesh. Rakesh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'll make you host. Okay. Yeah. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Yeah.
Uh, who are going to answer today? Uh, hello, sir. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Kiran from Alapi, sir. I'll be answering today, sir. Okay. And along with you? Uh, I'm not sure, sir. Who else is there? Acha, you are not knowing. I'll ask Tanvi. I don't know, sir. Uh, yeah. Good evening, Pankaj Bhai. Good evening. Good evening, good evening. We'll just start in another five, seven minutes when everyone joins. Sure, 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 sure. Today, we want you to uh, ask all the questions and we will keep quiet. Stone disease is always interesting.
Make Dr. Hudedar co host. ज्वाइंट होते हैं मैंने दो ना, अपने दो नाम से लॉगिन किया एक मोबाइल से और एक लैपटॉप से दोनों को होस्ट बनाओ ना मेरे को को होस्ट को होस्ट डॉक्टर पंकज यस गरम हुए डॉक्टर गीते ही वाज बिजी इन इंक्वायरी फ्रॉम मॉर्निंग सो ही इज लाइक यू नो इन मुंबई ओनली एंड सो ही विल जॉइन लिटिल लेट आई थिंक हिरेन इज आल्सो बिजी इन अ सर्जरी बट ही विल गेट थ्रू सो आई थिंक वी कैन स्टार्ट Yes, we can start. Let me check if Ganendra is free. I'll ask Ganendra to join. They can 
they can all join later on yes 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 i am in between two cases sir but i have joined right now ha huh. yes so hiren will be listening in between yes and sir. he will also ask the question so we can you know, start pas do pv okay so today we have got four different cases and we'll start with the first case one sir who are answering uh, sir i'll be answering from uh, i'm dr kiran from uh, alp medical college okay who else is answering with you you know uh, i'm not sure sir acha i'll just ask uh, tanvi I also good morning, sir. Okay, good, good, good. I think then we start now. Achin, I think you can start now, sir. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, and talk little, little louder so that everyone can hear you properly. Yes, sir. can you see my screen yeah but it is the uh, i think the first uh, slide only yeah i'm moving it here but it's not moving in there I think you might have to join again yeah i might have to try it again yeah. I will just stop share and reshare. So, Miraj, I am happy that uh, you are, uh, you know, answering again and again. And uh, there are very, very, very few female urologists, and we are very happy when any female urologist, you know, female becomes urologist. So, we are very pr proud of you. Thank you. you know in the uh, recently concluded au there was a very interesting paper where they compared the lithotripsy results of a male versus female urologist and it was uh, a very interesting finding where they said that uh, they found that women urologists tend to follow guidelines much strictly as compared to male urologists and there is results of eswl are marginally better so i was quite amused to see read that paper and in uh, europe sir was... a lot of female urologists especially in amsterdam yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. females take up urology yes i think in there in eau more than 30% women correct, urologists sir. correct 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 sir yes so because dr uh, uh, lakshman prabhu is so keen on starting the women's wing so i took a picture of that uh, uh, poster and sent it to uh, lakshman prabhu okay i think we can start yeah i think we can start now uh, this is scenario 1 a uh, 61 years uh, old uh, gentleman resident of mumbai blank card by profession presented with complaints of pain in left flank on and off since 15 days increased in intensity and frequency for last 3 days and associated with complaints of hematuria 3 days on and off type fine so mera this is a history how will you elaborate this is a 61 year old male with left flank pain and hematuria since 15 days it is uh, probably a, a case of uh, left flank pain uh, because of calculi disease or uh, uh, it may be because of some uti because of any uh, uh, malignancy because he is 61 and uh, uh, it can be um, any uh, vesical calculus or it can be a, uh, it can be uh, some prostate related uh, uh, infection or uh, it can be any uh, uh, pain related to the left flank that is any colitis or constipation or um, any 
Yes. So what? So what are the history? How will you ask the history? What are the important questions we'll ask? History related to lower urinary tract symptoms such as uh, frequency and uh, uh, the character of the pain. Uh, that is whether it is colicky, it is a constant type pain. Whether it is associated with nausea, vomiting, and uh, it is associated with fever and chills. And uh, there is associated hematuria which is present. So if there is any pyuria, if there is any um, dysuria, if uh, any uh, urgency is there, and uh, in similar history in the past, any history of passing stones, dysuria, any uh, the symptoms like uh, loose motions or uh, as a differential, any constipation and. Uh, uh, any associated features of uh, uh, any papillary edema, any kind of uh, facial puffiness, um, and uh, lethargy, and uh, uh, if I can just stop you here, you see, when you are asking history, let's have some system to it. Uh, your patient is presented with left flank pain and hematuria. So before going anywhere, let's first get into the details of these two symptoms. You see, you spoke of everything, but I have still not understood what is the severity of hematuria. And I'm also interested in knowing what phase of urination the hematuria happens. Okay, these will be two important things which will help me take decisions as to how priority my treatment is for this patient. Okay, so it is important to ask how significant means is it associated with clots? Uh, what is the uh, amount of clots? What is the shape of the clots? Uh, is the hematuria total, initial, terminal? We know that significance of all this is going to be different. And then go to other history. Right. Okay. Achint can go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay, stay, Mehraj. What do you want to say? Terminal hematuria is present in prostate, uh, prostatic symptom. I didn't hear you. Come again. Terminal hematuria and prostate uh, related. Right. So, whenever there is total hematuria, we are looking at a source above the and above. Okay, and if the patient has initial hematuria, it is mostly urethral. Terminal urethral uh, hematuria will be bladder, neck, and prostate. Yeah, and sometimes it can be also because of cystitis. True. Yeah. Sir, can I I elaborate? Yeah, please elaborate. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, I'd also like to ask for a, any history of, uh, uh, since I am suspecting stone as one of my uh, initial diagnosis, I'd also like to ask him uh, any dietary history to uh, get a better idea of uh, if he's taking any uh, drugs and uh, dietary history, I mean, if he's taking any medications in particular, uh, like vitamin C, vitamin D, or um, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors or something like that. Also, I'd like to ask him for any particular diet, like non-vegetarian, vegetarian diet, just to get an idea. And I'd also like to ask uh, for any uh, pathological fractures uh, or something which he may have, uh, or if he has any swellings and pains in the joints. Uh, sir, it could be due to uh, uh, renal tubular acidosis may cause uh, resorptive hyper hypercalci hypercalciuria. So there may be pathological fractures which happen. Kiran, I think we are taking history a bit too far away here. Okay. okay history should only help us take the initial steps in evaluation. Okay. These would never come, means when you sit in OBD, do you end up asking all these questions to the patient? Patient will run away if you ask so many questions. Yes. Okay. And so even in exam, don't ask questions which will put you in difficulty. Yes. The moment you say this, my next instinct is to take you towards drugs and stones. Okay. 
Okay, uh, and uh, uh, you can easily be cornered if I take you in that direction, or for that matter, if we start discussing RTA now. Okay. Yes, sir, yes. So don't go into corners where you do not want to go. What is my aim at this time? You see, at this time, when the patient, uh, elderly gentleman, has come to me with pain and hematuria, okay. Stone is not going to be my primary diagnosis. My primary diagnosis will be some form of, I want to first rule out some form of malignancy. Okay. Yes. So we are looking at that as number one possibility and urolithiasis as number two possibility. Now let's not look at etiology of either and then go into history of that. Those come later on once we uh, are more uh, advanced in the assessment of the patient. Okay, sir. What do you think, Gaurang Bhai? Uh, right or you would... No, I 100% agree. The yes. differential diagnosis at 61, as you said very rightly, pain and bleeding. First will be like malignancy. Second will be stone. And third, maybe some cystic disease. So Absolutely. these are the three important. And then we have to concentrate mainly on these three only. If you start asking about diet and all, that means you know in uh, well in advance that this patient has got uh, uh, stone disease. So we have to restrict. I, I agree with you totally. And, and you okay. know, we want to take the discussion now. Where do you, which is the best place for you to take this discussion? Thank you. Is to, if we start discussing about evaluation, if we start discussing about the treatment, I'm yes. not interested in going towards diet management at this time. You see, the moment okay. I have impressed the exam with evaluation and treatment, then let diet come as a question which takes me to higher grades. Let it not yes, be sir. a question where I am being assessed. Am I clear in what I am trying to say? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, Achin, go ahead. Yes, sir. History was given by patient himself and seemed to be reliable. According to him, he was asymptomatic 15 days back when he started having pain in left flank. Sudden in onset, folic in nature, non radiating type, relieved on medication. Pain has increased since last three days and is associated with nausea vomiting. Patient also complains of hematuria for last three days, uh, painless type, no fixed association with stream, no passage of clots. Go ahead. No history of fever, burning maturation, no history of LUTs, no history of urethral instrumentation or surgery in past. No history of bleeding disorder, anticoagulant therapy or blood transfusion in past. No history of lithuria trauma. No history of facial puffiness, fetal edema, breathlessness. No history of jaundice, headache or bad days. So now, next what? So, so basically, since it was a sudden onset pain, which was colicky in type, uh, like uh, Sir said, uh, since there is also hematuria, uh, I don't think the hematuria, what type it was, has been uh, clearly uh, mentioned. But uh, I'd still like to keep malignancy, as Sir said, as the uh, initial uh, this thing. Uh, oh, okay, no fixed association with straight. Uh, so basically, it, it could be malignancy, like Sir said, as a first, uh, and then we'd also have to think about stone disease. Since the pain is uh, uh, sudden and uh, colicky in nature, it could be uh, tending more towards stone disease. So, Can malignancy uh, present with colicky pain? If there are clots which yes, are obstructing. Perfect. Obstructing the contract clots can uh, cause clot colic. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now what uh, next? So now I'd like to go ahead with a general examination and a focused examination of the uh, abdomen, sir. No okay. other history? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, uh, uh, now I'd uh, also like to ask about any uh, family history. Uh, if, a, if he has any family history of uh, uh, malignancy or uh, stone disease. Uh, I'd also like to ask, as I said before, some drug history, if he's taking any medications or anything, bowel bladder history, uh, if he's having uh, any... Uh, constipation or any difficulty. Achin, go ahead. 
yes sir sir uh, even mr uh, dr sai krishna is also answering good evening sir Uh, sir, uh, past history, no history of any hypertension, ischemic heart disease, diabetes, colitis, uh, pulmonary tube, thyroid, or any other surgery in the past. Uh, Personal history, diet is mixed, no allergy to any drugs or food, sleep normal, undisturbed, bowel health is normal, no addiction to any form of tobacco or alcohol, uh, nothing contributed from family history. Sir. Okay, so who is that, Doctor Sai? Yeah, good evening, sir. So yeah. uh, before we proceed further here, Kiran, I would want to say that you should have stressed a bit on the history of tobacco and smoking. Yes, sir. Okay. No, uh, no, sir. Yes, more sir. than any drug or any other thing, smoking and tobacco would become more important in history at this time. Yes, sir. Yes. I agree. Okay. You said uh, family history for malignancy. What did you mean by that? Uh, sir, if, if you're suspecting some uh, RCC, sir, then uh, um, there may be some familial history of RCC uh, where, where there may be, uh, they may have uh, RCC in the family uh, that may have, uh, that's why I asked for the family history. So how and when does the familial RCC present? Uh, in the uh, usually it presents in at an earlier age, sir. Uh, usually it presents at an earlier stage, sir, earlier age. Okay. Uh, and so mainly you have to say the syndrome. Uh, uh, Shall we have children? Yes, sir. There are so many this is what I meant that you are diverting the case. <laughs> okay, sir. Yes. Okay. Let's come back to this case. Okay. Achin, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, general examination, uh, examination done in well-lit uh, room with proper oxygen consent, patient conscious, cooperative, well-evaluated to type, place, and person. Uh, general condition is fair, weight is 66 kg, height 168 centimeter, pulse 80 beats per minute, regular rhythm. BP is 120 by 90 mm HG, diet arm supine position, respiratory to the cycles per minute, afibril, SPO to 98% on air, air, no uh, evidence of pilaricular sinusis, globus, lymphadenopathy, edema, head to toe, and spine exemption, grossly normal. So, Dr. Sai, what were you looking for in general examination and what have you found in this patient? Uh, sir, in general examination, I, first I want to look uh, for the presence of any hypertension in this case. Perfect. And uh, uh, if the patient is having any anemia or uh, jaundice or any pedal edema is there or not. So, these are the things I want to look in the general examination. Sir. So, and yes. what is the nourishment so of I the patient? I would be interested in tachycardia, blood pressure and yes, anemia. Sir. So, these are three things we are looking at. So yes. he has said that the, well, so uh, how would you rate this blood pressure? Uh, sir, in right arm in supine position, sir. No, no, no. So how do you assess this? It is 120-90. So how do, what significance do you give to this? Well, sir, his uh, diastolic blood pressure is slightly higher. Um, so if the patient is having uh, hypertension, then I can suspect some uh, Pathology like uh, hydrogenated nephrosis or hydrogenated nephrosis, which is uh, uh, causing the uh, damage to the upper tracts, and that led to parenchymal damage leading to the hypertension. Okay, let's proceed. Sir, per abdomen, patient exposed from nipple to knee and is uh, examined with the implied informed consent. Inspection abdomen is flat, umbilical center and inverted, no visible lump, restalysis, pulsations, and gauze veins or scar mark. All contents moving equally with expression. No flank coldness noted on either side. Well, palpation, no localizer of temperature tenderness, no hepatomegaly, splenomegaly, no lump palpable, no renal angle tenderness. And genitalia uncircumcised with the retractile prepuce. External uterine matrix normal. Viral test is and called normal and well patient, all hernia orifices is normal. And uh, DRE said no facial facial hemorrhage, no tenderness, prostatic fossa is flat, no mass palpable. Because staining present, blood staining absence of finger, and rest everything is normal, sir. Yeah, fine. So now 
looking at all these things again what i think throughout the history or whether the clinical examination you have not been able to 100% point pinpoint which is the uh, definite diagnosis so still you are with the differential diagnosis yes sir. correct mirage yes yes <clears throat> fine so now in looking at this what are the important investigations you like to do ultrasound of the abdomen uh, cbp creatinine and uh, yes sai Uh, sir, I want to add uh, with this. I want to do CT clotting time, bleeding time, and uh, PTI in order of this patient as he is having hematuria. And uh, uh, I'll do the ultrasound abdomen and pelvis so that I have the basic idea of what exactly the thing is, yes, so that I can differentiate some differential diagnosis. And along with that, CBP and creat. Now, sometimes the examiner may directly ask you that patient has got hematuria. You don't want to do directly a CT scan. Because that is one of the CT scan is indicated in hematuria. So what will be your answer? Yes. Then why you want to do sonography? Sir, so sonography is an extension of the clinical examination. So I want to do the sonography first, so that I have the basic idea of what exactly the pathology is, and then I want to get all the details with the help of the CT scan later on after the ultrasound. Yeah. So your Will answer the CT be... scan change based on what you find on sonography. Uh -huh. That is uh, the yes, answer. Sir. Suppose, yes, sir. Suppose so if an ultrasound is right, different. that it is an extension of your clinical examination one, and depending on that, sir, I can advise. For example, patient has got only uretic calculus. Yes, sir. I can Correct. do only plain CT, only plain CT, KUB, like yes, that. Sir. So different things. And if there is a malignancy, you may ask up to CT, 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 CT. CT. graphing. Yes, sir. So None of you are asking for urine routine any particular right? reason. Answer. Answer. Uh, Sorry. No, no. Okay, you can answer my question. I said. <laughs> urine routine. You are not asked. See you. Come again, madam. Okay. She said C U E, which is uh, urine examination. I think. Uh, okay. Okay. I was not aware of this short form. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. Please go. Huh. Just show. Achin, the uh, urine routine shows uh, specific gravity one point zero three, acidic pH, protein absent, sugar absent, RBC is twenty two thirty per hyperfill, WBC is more than ten per hyperfill, epithelial cell absent, crystal cast absent, bacteria absent, culture no growth. Okay, other investigation. Uh, blood report shows hemoglobin twelve, count six thousand, uh, and everything is normal. Creatinine slightly more than the normal range. Okay, fine. So what you? Okay, the further your sonography. Sonography. Uh, ultrasound is available. I don't have. I have the report. Uh, right kidney normal in size, shape, and texture. Carefully well maintained. No evidence of any right any hydrodiastosis, hydrodiastosis, or calculi. Left kidney normal in size, shape, and texture. Carefully well maintained. Presence of multiple cortical cysts with multiple calculi in all calcines. And pelvis with largest in pelvis measuring 1.2 centimeters, which is associated with mild hydrodiastosis. No hydrodiastosis. Bladder is normal. Prostate 24 gram. Now in the sonography, when you see something like this, they are saying that multiple calcula in all calcials uh, and the pelvis. What is the first thing that comes into your mind? Any one of you? Sir, tuberculosis may also be the cause for this, sir. Pardon? Sir, I I'd like tuberculosis. I like to rule out uh, nephrocalcinosis, uh, since it is there in uh, multiple calcula in all the calcis and pelvis. Uh, could be due to nephrocalcinosis as well. The PJO, I also, I, also I want to rule out, sir. No, but that is okay. That after seeing the further investigation, you can decide. But my question is, when the sonography says multiple stones, 
in all the calices and there is a pelvic stone what is the meaning of that so what type of stone comes into your mind stagon tincher pardon it could be a stagon calculus which is uh, extending and uh, from the pelvis to the different calicula calices and so that which that is what i want to tell you that yes, whenever sir. they say and when you take the uh, other investigations you will see that it is a probably see it's a single yes yeah so now after this what you want to do sir i'd like to take the yeah contrast ct uh, sorry uh, i'd like to say to play uh, plain ct sir non contrast ct for this patient why uh, uh, because i want to know uh, more information sir about the size the location and uh, uh, also the relation of the stone to the kidney and the uh, relation of the kidney with the other uh, like and if any if any other associated uh, problems are there so now what that you will, uh, understand from this sonography and the creatinine which is marginally raised what is your interpretation there is it's a uh, it's a sto uh, stone disease of the uh, left kidney sir uh, there is a urinary calculi in the pelvis and uh, probably a staghorn calculi with uh, hydronephrosis with uh, mild hydronephrosis no but creatinine is 1.4 it is raised there might be some infection also so only in one kidney what about other kidney Uh, both kidneys have well maintained corticomedullary differentiation no but why then creatinine is raised because of obstruction so it is only in the one kidney some associated infection but then you are saying that urine is there is no growth no culture everything is fine so that may be some bilateral parenchymal disease apart from this stone disease second possibility is that right kidney is already affected even though it is sonography is showing everything normal it might be affected left kidney was better functioning and because of the stone it has the creatinine has increased okay. so will you like to do with a contrast or without contrast yeah sai sir uh, sir one thing uh, in this ultrasound in this ultrasound they have mentioned that the multiple cortical cysts are there so one thing yeah. i want to know is what is the size of the cyst and uh, whether any separations are there or not and what is the echogenicity inside that cyst that is one thing and if any separations are there and if ultrasound shows any complexity of the cyst then i'll go for the contrast ct in this case or else plain ct kb is sufficient sir okay so in this case because the creatinine is raised and all the cortical cysts are all are simple multiple cortical simple multiple so we will just go ahead with the plain ct plain ct kb sir sure Can you see? Yes, sir. If it is on your mobile, you can make it. You can enlarge it and see. This in the mid pole on the left side and start on calculus. Always start with the normal findings. In one line, finish it. And go ahead with the abnormal side. Normally enhancing kidneys. See the all solid organs appear the normal, correct? And the right kidney. Right kidney appears. The size, shape. Normal. Size is Just normal. Everything is normal on the right side. Now explain about the left side. Left side, multiple simple cysts in the mid pole and lower pole, and uh, with staghorn calculus, which is 
See, go from outside inside, na. Talk about parents. Talk about seeds. Then talk about the parenchyma. Then talk about the hydronephrosis and the calculus and the extent. There, there is a hydronephrosis which is present in the lower pole. It is visible and uh, upper pole also. Some hydronephrosis is visible and uh, the. Sagon calculus occupying the lower pole, the mid, the, the middle, and the pelvis, also in the upper pole. Yeah, so it is extending to all the different, all the three poles, na? Huh? See, so what is the next investigation like? To someone has asked about IBP and NCCT. So what are the role? If the creatine is normal, I will definitely will like to ask with the contrast. Okay, CT. IVP, yes, yeah. The nowadays we don't do IVP because one is the radiation is almost uh, same with the newer uh, uh, CT scanners. Second thing is cost is almost same. There is not much difference if you do limited films. Um, in IVP, again everything depends upon uh, your uh, preparation. You may miss some stone, uretic calculus, and all these things. So. Today we prefer a CT scan rather than a plain X-ray. Okay. Yes. So now this is the case. What else you want to know? I want to know about the size of the stone and uh, the Hounsfield values. Okay. Hi, Achin. Why do you want the Hounsfield value? Uh, sir, I want to know uh, how much radio dense uh, it is, sir. Uh, no, but why? How will it change your treatment plan? Um, uh, sir, I can have the idea. I can just have the idea with the help of the hospital units that whether it is a, a, a very hard stone which will take much time during the time of my surgery. Okay. Anything else? Other than other than other than that, uh, uh, I won't get any information because my planning uh, will be different. Sir, suppose if I'm thinking of VSWL, in that case, the Hounsfield values uh, uh, will be of much help. But, but obviously, uh, we are not, not in this case. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Now, if I tell you the Hounsfield unit is three hundred, what will you uh, analyze this as? Uh, sir, it may be a soft stone which will break uh, easily during the time of my surgery. Sir. A matrix stone. Matrix stone. Perfect. So whenever we are treating a staghorn stone, Hounsfield unit becomes important because you see with this X-ray, we know that it's not a low Hounsfield unit stone. But usually you will not have an X-ray with a CT scan. So and on CT scan, if you come to know that it's a very low HU stone, then we should look at infection stones, which could be matrix stones. Yes, sir. And uh, with such large stones, so there will be, say, if I get trapped into asking HU, these are the two reasons I'll give. Number one will be that I would want to confirm whether it's a low density matrix stone. Uh, my treatment plan will be different. And number two, uh, even for PCNL, the results, uh, are the results different from uh, low HU and high HU stones? They are different, depending on stone yeah. and guys. Area. So, uh, guys, how does HU impact the stone free status? The stone clearance uh, might not be complete. It might take time to uh, clear the stone. And so your clear. audio probably is not very good. Uh, one suggestion if you switch off your video, your audio will be, be better. Yes. Uh, what were you saying? Come again. Uh, the stone clearance may not be complete if uh, the HU is more. The success may be lesser. Uh, no, it is exactly reverse. You see, in PCNL, the higher the HU, better is the stone-free rate. And lower HU, the stone-free rate is lower. 
because it is very difficult once if you start breaking the stone so much dust is formed that it is very difficult to pick up all that dust rather if it's a hard stone it is possible to chisel the stone properly and pick up the pieces properly in the rrs it is reverse in rrs the lower the hu better is the stone free status but in pcnl the higher the hu better is the stone free status anyway so and, uh, let's and one more thing is uh, that uh, you know less hu then there are chances that you may not be able to see in cities uh, in uh, x ray in your x ray uh, yes uh, yes yeah yes, you know and then you may miss uh, some fragment if it is migrated also if we are uh, looking at a pure uric acid stone there is also some role of uh, chemo dissolution for pure uric acid stones even large stones okay yes. so let's not go there let's stick to this case Achin, do you have that any hu field but you can see hu yeah, is more than 1100 it's almost a household made of bone so so now next what what do you want to do yeah one of your answer please uh, sir i'd like to take uh, discuss the treatment options with the patient but uh, i'd like to uh, ask uh, the patient i mean uh, i'd like to convince the patient to uh, go ahead with a uh, percutaneous uh, nephrolithotomy sir uh, because uh, uh, since it's a staghorn calculus the ideal treatment for this patient would be a percutaneous nephrolithotomy uh maybe from the uh, an upper calyx puncture so that i'll be able to clear uh, maybe even it might require even one more puncture or even one more sitting so i'll have to explain to the patient that uh, this is a large stone and it may uh, require more sitting now if you are doing surgery there is a bleeding and yes. you have to remove this kidney will you like to do some other investigation preferably before uh, yes sir preferably yeah. i like to do a ct uh, a urography as well for this patient uh, but if, just if to, your radiologist yeah. is saying what will be because the, he will he has calculated and he has calculated and he has told you that uh, because of the weight and everything uh, he is uh, is it creatinine clearance cannot be and he doesn't want to take chance and doesn't want to give contrast and why you want to do ct and irp with contrast uh, so sir it will get to give us an idea of the uptake uh, in the kidney as well as the drainage pattern if, if at all it's an obstructive uh, pattern no, no, no. kiran are you interested I, in drainage pattern sir i can know about the Sorry. pcs anatomy beforehand are you interested in drainage pattern Uh, no, no. I mean, basically the uptake, sir. We want to know the functional. Does system. the uptake of CT correlate with the renal function? Potential renal function with a. Yes, sir. Definitely, we can. Uh... You see, CT resolution is so high that even in kidneys which have function as low as ten percent, you will see uptake on CT scan. It is not like IVP where. the function needs to be minimum 30% and above for it to show a nephrogram okay so ct is never done a contrast ct is never done to assess the renal function there are other ways of looking at renal function on ct scan where they uh, assess the uh, uh, parenchymal uh, uh, parenchyma of both sides you see there are uh, different algorithms which will calculate the exact amount of parenchyma in each kidney and based on the amount of parenchyma they are able to deduce as to how much contribution is there from each kidney but contrast ct is not done to assess the function of kidney this part is 100% sure okay so uh, like uh, sai said that he wants to know the uh, orientation of pelvic elation system even that no longer remains a, a reason for contrast ct because with uh, high end ct scans and with good reconstruction it's possible to get the pelvic elation anatomy even without contrast and as it is you could be installing contrast uh, as a first step of your pcnl uh, that is a, a retrograde pilogram retrograde pilogram yes sir so uh, to look for function 
So, sir was hinting you towards what would you nuclear do scan. for solution? You have to yes, come sir, with nuclear, nuclear scan, scan, not with contrast city. If you wanted to think of contrast city, you should have done it as a first test. Earlier. Then why did you do plane city? Yes, sir. So, I'd, I'd like to go ahead with a DTPS scan, sir. Uh, so that I can know the differential function uh, of the kidney. And mainly because the creatine is marginally raised. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so it may be having... if you calculate GFR, na, it will be less. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Achin, we have not done uh, I don't know, DTPS scan, correct? No, sir. Not DTPS scan for this patient. Okay. Achin, so, can you go back Dr. to the plane, 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 plane image? I just wanted to... Normally, we are not... See, in the practice, we are not doing... Uh, once we get uh, stegon calculus, CT is not showing any abnormality on other side. Usually, we are not uh, asking in a marginal case. We don't ask for uh, uh, DTPS scan. Correct? But in exam, I think they should uh, talk about that. So, uh, there is a question, Kiran, uh, by Dr. Yanindra yes, Sharma, sir. that why not DMSA, why DTPA? Uh, sir, we want to estimate the GFR as well. Uh, so, that will be, uh, the DTPA scan will give us the uh, GFR as well as the split function of the kidneys. Uh, sir, can we make Dr. Yanindra as a co-host? Make, make him, the, him, He is co-host, sir. He can unmute himself. Yeah. yeah. Ganesha, please go ahead with your question. My, uh, uh, one thing uh, which I follow and I think should be answered by students in exam is that a functional evaluation must before intervention, especially in PCL and especially also from a medical legal function. Absolutely. Well said. And uh, whether we want to do DMSA, DTPA, or a plain IV. Uh, nowadays, especially in all the bigger centers, non contrast CT scan or CT urography is a norm. The question is what, uh, what additional information we get from DTPA uh, versus DMSA? So, Ganandra, even I would have asked for DMSA in this patient because I see no role of DTPA here. I am not interested in the drainage pattern at all. And the functioning nephron mass is better assessed by a DMS scan. Uh, the answer given by one of the students was he wants to assess the GFR. Hmm. But uh, I, I am not sure how accurate is GFR estimation in these cases when a DTPA is done. Absolutely. In presence of obstruction and probably chronic infection, it may not tell us the true story. That is on that side. But if you are contemplating on the opposite side, that, you know, because you want to find out what is the function of opposite side, then I think DTPS can, will be of uh, help, but not on the obstructed side. Okay, sir. So, uh, some form of nuclear uh, study to assess the renal function. Yes. Uh, one last question for the sake of the question. For the students, what is the upper limit of creatinine after which an intravenous urography is useless? 1.8. Reference, man. Uh, Campbell seems like. <laughs> so, uh, Dr. Miraj, I'll, uh, just one suggestion. What you are saying may be absolutely right, may have been given in Campbell, but uh, uh, never give a single figure. Okay. In medicine, we always give some range. Uh, it will also depend on many other factors, including patient's age, associated comorbidities, or the type of contrast that you are using. And to the best of my remembrance, I haven't read this for a long time, but I think we used to consider it as 2.5, but uh, I don't know what the recent Campbell says. Polex says 4 milligram per cent. <laughs> okay. 
Pankaj, your should final be... comment on what should be the functional in evaluation in such patients? Ganendra, I would have done in this patient a plain CT followed by a DMSS scan. I extensively use DMSA in urolithiasis and I believe what we want to know, we come to know much better with DMSA than with DTPA. But uh, from their exam point of view, I think let them stick to either a contrast CT or a IVP or a DTPA because a lot of people would not agree to DMSA. And Pankaj, suppose somebody is in a center where a high-end CT is not available, very mm. often Barring bigger institutes, most of them have got a 16 slice or a 32 slice CT. And the PC system evaluation anatomically is not that uh, 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 great with these CT scans. So, Ganesha, if we do not have facility for a proper CT, then we have to fall back on IVP. IVP yeah. <clears throat> yeah. If there were... Sometime I feel that uh, well done IVP is more helpful to me in PCNL rather than uh, because it's, many a time CT is a little confusing. As you can see in this case, when you see the plain X-ray, like you know, you can think that how you are going to do puncture, but looking at CT, it becomes a little difficult. No, sir. What we need is a good radiologist who spends time with these images and gives us good reconstruction images. Okay. Uh, just these coronal images obviously will not help us, but we need proper reconstruction images. Uh, and uh, 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 very good information is possible on CT. But yes, I agree that we have all grown on the IVP. So we still love our IVP. Correct. Fine. I agree with you. So now next what, what do you like to do? What are the different modes of uh, treatment in this case? Achinta, I suggest go to the plain X-ray KUB that will be easier for us to discuss, yes. Yeah. Chalo, answer karo. PCNL open nephrolithotomy, yes. PCNL first. First is PCNL. Yes, sir. Any variations in PCNL? Multipuncture, please. That is one. Okay, chalo. First is multipuncture. Second? Laser. Madam, I will give you a hint. This question is asked by Dr. Gaurav Shasan. <laughs> but she may not know that. Okay. <laughs> No, no problem. <laughs> so, what are the different? Yes, you said so PCNL, multipuncture. Okay, that is one. Then, what are the when you are doing PCNL? What are the things you'll keep it in mind? Which other method? Uh, Naproscope. Uh, Anyone else? PCIR, sir. If very good. Very good. Then. When you are doing PCNL, will you like to use mini perk to start with in this case? Uh, no, sir. Since the stone burden is quite high, sir, it's better to go with a standard PCNL. So when you go for a standard PCNL, along with that, if you have got a mini perk with you, you know, it will be easier yes. for you to enter later on for the small, small fragments into the yes, different sir, yes. calices. What else? If the, you want to enter into different calices, you don't want to make another puncture. What else you can have with you? Flexible. RRS. Very good. And Not RRS, flexible nephroscope. Flexible nephroscope. Flexible nephroscope. Then, so this is all about PCNL. Then second is combination of? Uh, flexible ureteroscopy plus PCNL. Yeah, so which, so how you replace the patient? Prone or supine? The supine is... Uh, 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 yeah, so supine, supine in lithotomy, lithotomy, right. uh, flank free. Uh, Fine. So this is a second. What else? Kiran, one more suggestion here. Uh, uh, instead of all this description, if you would have just given the name of the position. 
uh, it's FOS ML, ML sir. Yes. So, uh, better use correct terminology at right time so that this confusion of description is avoided. Uh, Fine. Can, I, what can I get? Uh, can you just uh, mention what did you uh, say? Which position? Well, there are many positions, sir. One is uh, Galakau modified uh, supine Maldivia position. Uh, then there is a Fosmel position, FOSML, that is flank free uh, uh, supine modified lithotomy. Yeah, so flank free modified supine lithotomy. Yeah. Uh, and yes, of course. Uh, prone and like for since we are planning an uh, uh, ECIRS, it may be difficult to do. I mean, it's not possible to do prone. Uh, as far as I uh, remember, the flank free position, uh, you don't keep anything underneath the lumbar region. There are two basic variations in this position. One is the formal position that we have mentioned, which is described by Dr. Aditya Sharma. There is a paper by him. Uh, yes. And the second one is what is described by Giudo Gisti. Interestingly, most of the people end up following what is mentioned by Giudo Gisti uh, because you are making a puncture just below the posterior axillary line. While with the classical formal position, the torso, especially the upper part of the torso, is tilted to nearly 45 90 degrees. degrees. Uh, yeah, even, uh, only, only 15 degrees. In the position which is described by Guru uh, Gisti. Fine. So, and what is the third tilted management? Open. Um, open, yeah. um, open or laparoscopic nep nephrolithotomy. I mean, uh, open nephrolithotomy. Nephrolithotomy. Laparoscopic? No, 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 not as laparoscopic. So what you will do? Open. Nephrolithotomy. Uh, the broadest. Um, so what is it called? Uh, voice is pressure. Anatopic. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. And you will do anatopic, and what you will do? Uh, By valving of the of through the broadest line. Uh, the calyces will be opened all along up to the era in, in fundibulum will be opened longitudinally along its length up to the pelvis until all the calyces are opened and then uh, the stone will be uh, removed. And then uh, suture calyces will be done. Uh, uh, if there are small calyces, two of them will be joined together and uh, they will be sutured. And finally, uh, the cortex will be sutured with the uh, absorbable sutures with a pledget in between. Are the vessels clamped during this procedure? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and if you are, uh, do you give a diuretic? Yes, sir. Diuretic will be given, sir. At the start of the procedure and... Uh, Which diuretic is given? At least six will be given, sir. Uh, and manitol, manitol will also. Manitol is, is preferred. Ozamide or manitol? And which is preferred and why? Manitol is uh, given, sir. Glis yes, sir. Why not frozamide? Easy, easily available, inexpensive. But no book mentions frozamide. They always mention manitol. Why? See the manitol usually like in barbiturate poisoning also all the calcium you know you know precipitation takes place in tubulars and this act mainly at tubular region and the same way you can use lasix but there are very high dose of lasix will have the similar effect that was that of the uh, manitol so like when we are doing even when we are doing a kidney transplant also in that also what we do we use manitol in the donor. Understood? Because it acts mainly as a tubular level. Yes. So which puncture you will do? Uh, 
lower uh, mostly a lower pole puncture is done most Well, uh, since this is a diagram, its uh, upper pole puncture would probably be better to clear that. So, I think there is one study which has shown that there are seventy percent chances of clearing this diagram to calculate if you do a middle uh, calyx puncture. Yanendra, what is your way? Uh, sir, if I would be doing a prone PCNL, I would do a upper pole puncture. If I am doing a supine PCNL. Uh, yes. Which would be my procedure of choice in this case because nowadays I do only supine. Would be the lower pole puncture. Uh, as regards studies, sir, there are studies. Uh, I think there is a study by uh, SGPGI which says that the upper pole puncture uh, gives a better clearance in stegon uh, uh, as compared to any other. So again, uh, my experience is that. The anatomy changes quite a lot when you make the patient prone and do an arch, and that gives you a really better orientation. But in this case, looking at it, I think the upper posterior lateral calyx for prone and the lower calyx for supine would be my choice. Right, but at the same time, Narendra, you tell Narendra, uh, yes. will you be prepacing one more guide wire in the middle calyx? Uh, if I am doing a supine, no. If I am doing a prone, yes. Because uh, even I would agree that I would go through the upper lateral calyx, uh, and upper lateral calyx, be just because of the position, the fixed nature of upper calyx, and the fact that upper calyx is more posteriorly oriented, you would be able to go from upper calyx to the all components of upper calyx, renal pelvis, and lower calyx. The only calyx which will not be accessible is the middle calyx one. If you come from the upper calyx, uh, and that probably will need one more wire placed uh, 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 before we dilate the upper calyx puncture. Why? Okay, Achin, what was done? Uh, sir, a PCNL was done through single puncture. Which puncture we had done? Uh, lower mid calyx. Okay, you have got a fill. No, sir. Okay, fine. So we had a, uh, yeah, we entered from there, and we got luckily because I think it's a dilated system. Uh, we were lucky to clear all the stones. So what are the complications? Uh, sir, one is a bleeding infection, and uh, injury to the surrounding structures like uh, colon, uh, pleura, lung. Yeah. So tell us, na, during you must say, na, during procedure Sorry. to the pelvis. So, tell me from the beginning, what are the complications will come across? Starting from cystoscopy. So during cystoscopy, there may be a difficulty in finding the ureteric orifice. uh it may be difficult to find the orifice and if at all the patient is having a high uh, a large bladder neck or a, a large prostate since he is a 61 year old man uh, uh so i mean that may be a, a difficulty prostate is 22 grams yes prostate is 24 cc only yes sir, it's only 24 cc but uh, that could be one of the uh, problems which we encounter during cystoscopy And uh, when we are uh, placing the guide wire, also, sir, there may be uh, injury to the uh, ureter mucosa and the pelvis as well. Uh, then, of course, sir, as the PCNL complications, we have to intraoperatively we have to mainly consider uh, bleeding as the uh, main complication, intraop bleeding as well as postop delayed bleeding. Um, and we can uh, expect some uh, there may be some injury to the uh, uh, surrounding structures like pleura especially in this case if we are uh, planning for a supracostal uh, sorry uh, supracostal puncture or an upper pole puncture uh, we may uh, have injury to the pleura uh, and uh, uh, there may be even uh, colonic uh, injury which uh, usually is more common in the left lower pole uh, region um And uh, yes, sir. And there may be post-op uh, sepsis and infection, which may be. Happen. 
encounter so miraj what are the intro of other complications or difficulties you may come across injury to the pelvis so uh, yeah, overshooting of the money uh, uh, puncture start with, the, start with the puncture dilatation guide wire Yes. because the stone is totally filling up the full kidney there are chances that you may not be able to puncture even if you puncture calyx urine may may not get you may not get urine the guide wire may not go inside it may not enter into the ureter correct there are multiple yes. cases there are chances that if you puncture you'll get fluid but your guide wire is just rotating inside to that uh, calyx yes. so suppose if it is going there you are getting fluid but the guide wire is not going how will you confirm whether it is in the cyst or in the pelvic lsl system so by fluoroscopic imaging we can see if the uh, guide wire is within the calyx or if it's outside fine then so one is that that you can may not be able to puncture second thing is guide wire is not going it is getting obstructed then your dilatation may be under dilatation or, yeah. or you may perforate in over zealous dilatation if you are attempting because the stone is totally filling up the all the calyces there may not be enough yes, of space sir. correct then yes sir as you said very rightly bleeding that when you are doing vcnl you may lose your track yes sir so and uh, there may be stone doctor, migration uh, yeah. there may so be some stone migration on, but but what dr pankaj maheshwari told you that was i think one of the very good advice that when you are doing that upper calyx cell puncture then you he will like to put one wire through the middle calyx for two reason one you have got a tract also and second important thing is if you are not able to clear that middle calyx cell calculus from above then you can go from that uh, uh, second tract yes yeah. yeah then incomplete stone clearance okay a post surgery decreased renal function that as you said very rightly injury because you are going from the upper calyx cell puncture maybe some trauma to like in, in the pleura you can have so you may develop a hydrothorax or sometime hematothorax right Yes. Fine. Uh, Pankaj Bhai, Granendra, Hudedar, you want to add something before we go to the second case? Sir, yes. I would. I would just Hello. want to. I would just want to correct what you have said here. Yeah. Uh, tell. When you are asked complications, let's segregate difficulties in procedure and complications. so a uh, few of the things you said were uh, technical difficulties of the procedure when they are talking of complications let them talk of complications which could be uh, bleeding overshoot uh, trauma uh, residual stones extruded stones uh, then some fluid changes surrounding organ injuries uh, but sir i believe when they are asked complications the technical difficulties would not come in this हेलो ओके गवन गवन हां डॉक्टर हुद्देदार सर सर बोलिए हां माय चॉइस विल बी आई विल डू मिडिल पोस्टीरियर कैलिक्स पंचर फर्स्ट एंड साइमल्टेनियसली आई विल पुट गाइड वायर फ्रॉम द अपर कैलिक्स सो दैट आई कैन क्लियर द पेल्विस एंड लोअर कैलिक्स इजीली द ट्रैक्ट विल बी स्ट्रेट आई कैन सी इन वन लाइन एवरीथिंग एंड इफ एट ऑल पॉसिबल इफ द सिस्टम इज डायलेटेड आई कैन क्लियर अप द अपर कैलिक्स आल्सो फ्रॉम मिडिल पोस्टीरियर कैलिक्स but if it is difficult and shearing is coming or is causing bleeding then i will try dilate that upper tract and do clearance of the upper calyx i think there is also a very good uh, uh, suggestion you know but basically i think better to do uh, two punctures and keep yeah. uh, both the wires safe yeah, yeah and as dr pankaj maheshwari said very rightly these are the two different yes yeah the technical difficulties and the complication you know yeah so but sometimes one some examiner may ask you uh, about the during the surgery so what they mean is this only 
technical problems so that also you have to elaborate technical technical problem is to make the space for dilatation because maybe snugly fitting calc uh, this calcus stone in the calyx it's difficult to pass the dilator and make space and make my put the ampulla sometimes Fine. So, anything else you want to add before we go to the second case? No. Vinayendra is still there. No, I don't think Vinayendra is probably locked locked out. Okay. Okay. Fine. Then we'll go to the second case. The scenario two, sir. A 47-year-old woman presented with complaints of pain in bilateral flank off and on and off for six months, dull aching type, non-radiating, non-referring, associated with low urinary tract symptoms since two months, no history of hematuria, dysuria, lipuria, known case of hypertension and epilepsy on medication, past history of CVS, uh, past history of left RIRS with left PCNL on uh, 14-12 and with left URS done two months before the, this surgery. And presently, patient is having left digestion in situ. On examination, nothing significant findings clinically. And labs are hemoglobin nine, count ten thousand, creatinine one sir, and urine nutrient microstore seventy to eighty percent, and twelve to fifteen RBCs. So, what is this case? What have you understood here? Please go back to the history. Yes, Dr. Sai, Madam Miraj, anybody? Uh, sir. Uh, actually, this patient presented with bilateral flank pain for six months, and there is past history of left RIRS and left PCML. And uh, so I'm thinking in terms of uh, uh, recurrent calculi or uh, bilateral renal calculi in this case, maybe. Uh, with uh, uh, 70 to 80 percent, so there is some amount of uh, urinary tract infection is there, and uh, 12 to 15 RBCs per high power fill up. So, uh, be, maybe because of the stones, uh, she is having 12 to 15 RBCs per high power fill. So, I'm thinking that there may be bilateral renal calculi or uh, urinary cal uh, bilateral renal calculi uh, with the left side digestant in situ and uh, some amount, some UTI in this case. With known comorbidities of hypertension and epilepsy on medications. Okay, fine. Show them CT scan. Yeah. One of you sir, can comment a, on this. So this is a plain CTK of this patient, which is showing the liver normal, spleen normal, and visualized the uh, pancreas is normal. And uh, it is uh, showing the uh, right uh, kidney. It appears to be shrunken with uh, thinned out parenchyma, and uh, there is a hydro uh, urethronephrosis with the uh, uh, one calculus within the proximal ureter and uh, one calculus within the pelvis with thinned out parenchyma. And on the left side, the kidney. Uh, Parenchyma appears to be normal. Uh, kidney parenchyma appears to be normal and with stent in situ, with DJ stent in situ. And there are uh, two stones which are present in the lower pole of the uh, left kidney. Okay. At some places you can see Parenchyma is a little thinned out. Okay? Oh, sir, sir, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. So now next, what you want to do? Uh, sir, in this case, I want, uh, as a serum creatinine is one, uh, and I think uh, the right kidney appears, uh, right kidney think it is a uh, non functioning and uh, he is having recurrent stones in the left kidney uh, with digestant in situ, and uh, some amount of UTI is there. So I want to do the urine culture sensitivity also in this patient. That is number one. And uh, I want to know the, uh, I want to document the non-functioning of the right kidney uh, before I want to proceed for uh, uh, any intervention. So what do you want to do? 
I want to do the urine culture sensitivity, sir. Uh, uh, I want to do the urine culture sensitivity and uh, uh, yeah. Uh, DTPS can be discussed, sir. Okay. Achil, show them DTPS can. Sir, CT scan report, sir, right kidney has multiple stones. Right kidney is also a little small in size, 7.8 centimeter. Uh, and stones measure 1.3 centimeter, 1.2 centimeter, 8 millimeter, with uh, 2.1 centimeter in uh, mid ureter, causing moderate to severe hydroureteral necrosis, with marked renal pancreatic thickening in the right kidney. In left kidney, it measures 12 centimeter in length, with multiple radiated calculi in mid and lower calyces, largest 11 mm in the lower pole, sir, with left digest at its zero, with mild hydroureteral necrosis. And uh, yeah. show, yeah, this is DTP scan. DTP scan shows GFR 53, left kidney split function 96.5, right kidney 3.5. Fine. So what do you want to do now? Uh, sir, this is clearly showing that right kidney is non-functioning and uh, the left kidney GFR is 53.7, which is adequate. Uh, so I want to know about the urine culture sensitivity in this case before proceeding. No, no growth. There was no growth. Okay, uh, there is no growth then. Uh... Probably she was on antibiotics, so we were not able to get uh, growth. Uh, okay, sir. So and so he she, she's having multiple renal calcula in the left kidney with digest and in situ. The calcula are present in the mid pole and lower pole calyces. The largest one is some 11 mm and with hospital units of 730. And uh, uh, so uh, in this case, I have the I'll counsel the patient. Uh, uh, I have the options of. Uh, uh, ESWL and uh, RARS in this case, sir. Flexi URS. Mm. So, what do you do to the right kidney and what do you do to the left kidney? Uh, sir, uh, which case, uh, sir, which kidney will uh, deal first? Sir, left as the patient is having bilateral oil pain, yes, as the patient is having bilateral oil pain, but the preserved, uh, I want to preserve the left kidney first, so I want to treat the left kidney first. But left kidney already, they have done three procedure and there is a digestion inside. Yes, sir. But uh, in this the case, the right kidney is, is totally kidney, obstructed. Sir. Then there is pus cells also. So you can do a, uh, if there is an, uh, a focus of infection, we can uh, proceed with a PCN for the right side. But uh, I think the decision for nephrectomy can be postponed till the left kidney are uh, removed. Bankaj, how will you answer? You just tell them how will you answer in exam. Can you go back to the CT scan, please? Yeah. Uh, suddenly, my there was a phone call, so I missed the CT measures. So you want the report? No, no. <clears throat> Okay, so before we proceed further, uh, uh, Sai, I think you were answering. Sir. How much Sir. significance will you give to this 4% function seen on DTP renogram? Uh, so this, this is non-functioning uh, right kidney with uh, stones. Uh, so it should be removed, sir, because the patient is symptomatic and uh, she is having a UTI because of that. So it should be removed, sir. But before tackling that uh, uh, kidney, I want to preserve the function of the left kidney first, sir. As she is, even though she had the multiple procedures before, so I want to tackle and preserve the left kidney first, and then uh, deal with the right kidney later. So what do you mean by when you said that you want to preserve the function of left kidney first? So I want to treat the calculi in those uh, uh, in that kidney first, and then uh, uh, go with the nephrectomy of the right side later on. Uh, uh, would you agree that the right obstruction is not an acute obstruction? Yes, sir. Uh, sorry, sir. Chronic. Is the right it's obstruction a chronic obstruction or a long-term obstruction? Yes, sir. It's a long-term obstruction, sir. Then why did he get pain? Because um, infection. True. So here we come. Probably we are dealing with a situation where this system which was, was obstructed for a long time has probably got secondarily infected. And because this patient is also symptomatic, I 100% agree with you that because left is a better functioning kidney, we should be concentrating on the left side first. But till we treat the left side, what is the harm of putting a nephrostomy tube on right? 
no harms it will serve yes, multiple sir. purposes yes, one it will take care yes, of the patient. two it will take care of the uh, infection three it will give me the exact uh, say output from that kidney which will help me decide yes, whether this kidney is salvageable or not yes sir so okay. my treatment plan in this patient would be to put a nephrostomy on right now coming to how will we treat the left stones because these are multiple stones multiple small residual stones at multiple different areas of the kidney yes, esw sir. probably may not be a very good idea because you will need multiple sessions and multiple sites of esw so yes, in this patient because the stent is already there you will I'm not going, to have to going up with a flexible ureteroscope flexible ureter so yes, uh, excess sheath and a flexible ureteroscopy would be what i would consider for the left side so my plan yes, in this patient would be a right nephrostomy and left uh, rirs but before doing left rirs this patient should be covered well with antibiotics because he's been yes, carrying sir. a stent for nearly now 5 months the stent was first placed in october yes sir okay so because it's a long duration stent we will expect some infection when we do manipulation on the left side so this patient should be well covered with antibiotics yes sir fine any other thought goran bhai ya uh, anil sir yeah no, no no i agree with you but due to many reasons now because this is a non functioning kidney it is a small size kidney and lots of so what we did was we because the dj stand was there in c2 you know so we went ahead and we finished the right kidney so we did an nephrectomy waited for few days and the left side because see already three procedures were done and they were tired they wanted the total clearance so we said okay we will do both okay. we'll try rirs or we'll do uh, mini pcnl luckily with the mini pcnl we were able to remove all the stones and then uh, you know she is now stone free and uh, even the dj stand is also removed but uh, as a second thought i think uh, what you said is right we can always do pcn on the right side and uh, go ahead so i think in exam if something like this comes this pcn we can always say it will be a good answer yes again from exam okay. point of view nobody can fault you for placing a nephrostomy exactly exactly and all the advantages are there after putting pcn again yes. pcn is bilateral stone there is no guarantee that she will not develop stone again so if we are able to salvage for any reason and we have seen some miracle takes place means even though if it is showing hydronephrotic kidney you know parenchyma is very thinned out long standing obstruction infection in spite of that we have seen that in some patients the gfr improves and uh, like you know we feel good that we have salvaged that kidney so in exam yes, also i think that will be a good answer okay sir yes yes yeah fine third case achin yes <coughs> sir third scenario a 39 year old gentleman presented to us with complaints of nocturia known case of autos adpkd history of hypertension diabetes present Past history of right URSL with DJ stenting for one centimeter upper ureter calculi done one month back with DJ stenting C2. History of right renal cyst aspiration done three months back. So this is a patient who has got polycystic kidney. He is aspirate for the pain. They had done the aspiration of the uh, cyst ultrasonography guided, and they have done URS. They have removed the stone. And with the stent insides, uh, now he has come with hematuria. So we did a CT scan. Show him. So you need to put in some RBC. These are just of... short cases for the discussion. We don't want to go into too much of uh, history details. So we found out that there is a one small stone in the ureter, about I think five millimeter, four point eight millimeter, and uh, just next to the DJ stent. So now the patient has got hematuria. He has got small fragment left in the right uh, ureter with the DJ stand in C2. Yeah. So now what you will do? How will you counsel this patient? And what you will do? And what you will expect about hematuria? 
so one other there is a, actually i they have not shown that there is another ct scan which is showing there is a calcified cyst even on the left hand side and they are saying that there is a one cyst which contains a blood inside the uh, calyx achin you have got that film just show them ct scan no sir image i don't have okay Fine. Uh, what is what what is creatinine value of this patient, sir? Creatinine is normal. Creatinine. So, how will you counsel, and what will you do? Uh, sir, I will counsel a patient that he is having the uh, autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease that is having multiple cysts in both the kidneys, and uh, because of that, uh, he may be having the hematuria. And uh, hypertension also maybe because of that, and uh, added on that with his comorbidities of diabetes mellitus. And the previous history of right URSL was done for one centimeter proximally ureter calculus, and this may be the uh, uh, 4.5 mm. That may be the residual calculus. Uh, uh, was the stone completely clear during the first setting, sir, of the right URSL? No, this is a fragment. The digest end is in C2, na? Yes, sir. This is a fragment. Okay, sir. Um, I'll 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 counsel counsel the patient. Uh, the patient that he needs uh, 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 the, uh, during the time of since it is a small calculus that is only five of them. So uh, the chances that during the time of digest and removal uh, the stone may uh, migrate down and then it will uh, come into the bladder. Or uh, I'll counsel the patient that he need uh, URSL for this uh, uh, fragment if it is not. Uh, if has not if it is not if I if it is, it has not migrated downwards during the time of the digestion removal. So, Sai, I have two questions for you. My question number one is: a patient with this patient has come to you with hematuria. What are the various yes, sources sir. of hematuria you are looking at? Uh, sir, one is uh, uh, maybe because of the cyst that uh, might have got communication with the calyces and that might have led to the hematuria. Or uh, uh, since he had uh, uh, the previous issue of uh, uh, stone disease and URSL and residual fragment is there, so because of that also he is having uh, the hematuria. And uh, because fragment causing uh, uh, frank hematuria, no, no, how common? No, how often have we seen that? Uh, uh, no sir, sorry, sorry, it is not. It may not be the reason. The stent itself may cause stent irritation. The stent. Okay. Now, uh, tell me one more reason as to why a four millimeter fragment should not come out. Um, sir, it may be because of the uh, edema uh, of the ureteric mucosa, which might have hindered the stone uh, passage. Uh, but edema would have subsided by now. The surgery was more than a month back. The stent size, uh, yes, if it is a six inch or something, then maybe it won't allow enough passage for. Okay. Anything else you can think of? And because of calcification. Calcification, why and where? With the stent or. Uh, uh... No, it is. It is, it is very clear that it is a stone. We have seen it properly. It is a stone. So one see, Doctor Mahesh is asking you very simple, especially subcutaneous. It has not uh, been done by you, okay? And this patient has been referred to you. One thing I will keep in mind is: was there any problem at the time of ureteroscopy last time? And maybe this is an extra ureteric fragment, or a fragment which is trapped in the wall of the ureter. Yes, okay. same. Okay. Okay. Shall we? Aage badi. So now what you'll do? You want to remove the stent, or you want to do URS and remove the stone also? What you want to do? Sir, I think we can give a trial by removing the stent, uh, and uh, we can. See, I'll uh, tell you. Since it's only five. Listen, listen. Now in yes. the practical question, if you have done URS, and now patient has come back to you, and if you. Tell him that I will be doing URS and remove this stone, and there will be extra cost. There are chances that you will put the digest stent again. 
so in that case you want to say that you will just remove the digestion so how will you justify that or you want to if a patient has been referred to you you will like to do removal of the stone and with along with the uh, digestion so how will you justify that so if it's an impacted stone then there may be chance that even after stent removal it won't come off and uh, they, that may lead to symptoms again and it may act as a snidus as well as for uh, further sound formation But so you will advise him to remove the dj as well as the do the urs and remove the stone and remove right? the stone yes fine miraj what you will do uh, we can also counsel the patient that we will remove the stent and uh, after that if the stone comes out during the surgery or we can follow it up with another ct scan after stent removal okay sign Uh, sir, I will remove the stent, do the uh, URS, and then uh, if the st stone is there, then if the stone is just stuck to the mucosa, I will remove that. Uh, um, if it is a uh, submucosal, then I won't uh, touch that. I just remove the stent and then come out. Okay. So, in principle, I think people say that you will remove the stone along with the digestion. Uh, none of you have spoken about MET. <laughs> so the uh, stone, uh, this uh, mean uh, in like less than five m millimeter stone. There's not much evidence saying that uh, the stone in will uh, come off even with MET. Yes, good. Okay. क्या किया तो नहीं ओ Pankaj, my. Now, what is your answer, uh, sir? Uh, the best answer again, what is what we do in practice is we will give all the options to the patient. I hmm. would tell the patient that one simple thing is to remove the stent. There is at least a fifty percent chance that stone will come out, but there is also possibility that the stone may not come out, and I may need to do a procedure again. Uh, if he wants. just going up few more centimeters or few more inches and removing the stone fragment probably is a simpler way so uh, even i would try to push this patient towards removal of fragment when i remove the stent because for some reason i have a feeling seeing the first image the fragment looks a bit too near the ureteric uh, wall shadow and i i think it will not be in the lumen let's see what you found it no this is Uh, he has gone back. He was not from here. Okay. So he has gone back, and I, I told him that you go to. I told him that you please go to your doctor and tell him to remove the stent as well as the stone, hmm. because he only knows you know what he has done. So as you said very rightly, and we we have no IVP you know showing earlier, because I think th this stone may be stuck again at the same place where originally it was. True. So in that case, we might have to put again DJ stand and all these things. So as you have said very rightly, I think we should remove the stand as well as the stone both, and explain him that this may be or may not be the cause of amateuria. You have got a polycystic kidney disease, and you have got so it may continue. But you require removal of this stand and stone. That is a definite thing. Uh, Doctor Gita has also joined. What is his opinion? Yes, even Hiran has joined. Sir. Yes, sir. I also feel that both stent and stone should be removed. And yeah. uh, as you rightly said, that previously that could be the site of edema of stone impaction, and there may be a small fragment in that edema or remaining there. We don't know, or whether it has gone out or into the mucosa. We don't know. So, if, if, if you, uh, URS details are not available. If you, if you observe the ureter at the site of stone clearly, carefully. The chances of removal of stone along with stent is slightly less. So, removal of stent and stone both are needed. Spontaneous passage of stone with DJ probably less likely in this patient considering the ureteric condition at the site of stone in reconstructed CT scan. 
fine i think all of us have agreed that we should go ag again inside remove the stone and tell patient that there are chances that if i find uh, you know most of the thing we have seen most of the time there is a edema there is a flap and we are always uh, concerned about the obstruction so again we might have to put a stent so I explain that to the patient to fine or next case sir so scenario 4 44 year old gentleman presented with complaints of pain in left lumbar region since one week associated with nausea vomiting no history of hematuria fever lithuria no history of clots history of uh, left pcnl twice in 2013 and 15 also when underwent left urs in 2021 and uri case is 7.8 yeah show them sonography report sonography shows the right kidney uh, normal size shape position with normal cmd mild fullness of the pcs with lower pole calculus 0.5 cm and simple cortical cyst 1.2 cm and left kidney sir uh, parenchyma normal cmd well maintained mild fullness of the pcs here also with numerous calculi largest 1.2 cm in lower pole And 1.5 centimeter in mid pole, and, and you can see there is a hydrodiaphoresis on the left side. Mild pieces, yes. All right. So what you will do, Saini? Miraj? Yes, sir. As uh, we uh, this uh, we will do the routine investigations like C U E, serum, creatinine, yeah, yeah, and. Uh, mm, uh, Yes, a CBP, and uh, we will also do a CT KUBP plane in order to see the calcul uh, calculi which are there within the okay. kidney, not the cause for the hydronephrosis, and to further mm -hmm. look for the number so, of calculi. Only the hydronephrosis can be because of what? Patient has undergone two times PCNL, one time URS. It may be because of the erotic structure that. So one is a residual uh, hydronephrosis. And hydrated. Sometimes we see like that. It appears in sonography. Second thing is, as you said very rightly, structure. Third can be because of the stone, right? Yes, sir. Because he she he has got multiple stone. One stone might have slipped down into the ureter. Show them CT scan, Achin. Yes. Yeah. Okay, can you see it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, how many stones are there? Um, left side in the lower pole there is a calculus, and in the mid pole one calculus, and in the low uh, mid ureter there is a calculus on the left side. Okay. Fine. Just show them. Achin, what is the report? The right kidney, sir. Uh, small uh, two cortical cyst with a small speck of peripheral calcification. Largest of these measures one point six centimeter in size in lower pole. And left kidney, sir. Uh, prompt excision of contrast with three radiodense calculi. One is three millimeter, nine millimeter, three point eight millimeter. H U is two twenty five twenty three and three eighty eight. Then, what is there in the left ureter? And oh, five point six millimeter mid ureteric stone, proximal hydrodiaphoresis two forty H U. H U two forty three. Yeah. Okay. 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 I would first like to uh, do a URS test for that calculus. If it is, don't want to give chance. Medical line uh, of treatment. Yes, sir. Because it is a five point six mm, there might be a fifty uh, a fifty percent chance, sixty uh, percent chance that the stone might pass off on its own. So, what is the medical line of treatment? What are the drugs used? Uh, proper hydration, alpha blockers like tamsulosin. So where the uh, tamsulosin will act? It will uh, 
will re uh, decrease the it will relax the smooth muscles which are there in the ureter and yes. uh, all the throat the ureter or in some particular point uh distal ureter and vo jason mainly distal ureter na? and where is the stone it is in the mid ureter in mid ureter so you think that alpha blocker will be of uh, help yeah yes sir it will be of help ha huh. how it will help it will help in uh, faster uh, clearance of the stone up so the lower up. ureter and sphincter will means the ureteric orifice will be relaxed and then yes. when you give hydration therapy there are good chances that along with that it may come down correct yes even yes. though it is not acting at absolutely at that level so yes. theoretically it's not going to be of a great help so which other drug you use uh, deflaza can be used uh, to decrease the edema and okay. uh, some uh, amlodipine uh, and uh, nifedipine can, can be used channel. yeah cal calcium channel blocker then citr uh, syrups um, alkalinizer yes yes alkaline in this case because uh, uric acid is raised so it might help um mm. which other drug mm. peroxostat can also be given sir which one pure peroxos since the uric acid is raised we uh, can uh, give peroxostat as well okay fine yes you can give xyloric or you yes okay what else uh there is one uh, the thing i uh, the one paper which uh, has shown ceresopeptidase also it decreases the edema and helps to in uh, facilitate the passage of the stone then uh, tadalafil hmm yes sir yes sir yes it is in bitter they are also of help and there is one study which shows that uh, if you have multiple ejaculation that also a lower electric stone it helps yes pankaj bhai abhi kuch aaya tha na sir ye article bar bar aata rehta hai ha ah. <laughs> so uh, now uh, frankly sir uh, i would want to slightly contradict you here sir uh, yes theoretically these are all the drugs which have been described Means alpha blockers, calcium channel blockers, uh, low dose steroids, uh, PDE five inhibitors, uh, but lot of uh, uh, meta analysis have shown that other than alpha blocker, nothing works. So yeah. uh, uh, I would feel the student should talk only about alpha blocker, and then if asked is there anything else, they can say that yes, these drugs have been tried, but recent evidence says that probably they do not work. and we should use them you see again as per guidelines it should be used for stones more than 5 mm in lower ureter yes yeah. uh, it is not supposed to really work for upper and mid ureter, upper ureter. Upper ureter stone though uh, means uh, uh, again uh, we cannot explain this but when you give eswl they say giving alpha blockers helps fragment clearance but when there is a fragment in the upper ureter uh, alpha blockers doesn't work so these are some gray zone areas uh, uh, yes you could uh, suggest alpha blocker and others you should just know knowing well that yes they were at one time tried yeah. but doesn't help correct so these are the drugs the idea is that they should know uh, they should know the drugs yes. which are there some analysis has been done and they are aware of that absolutely because here we try to even cover some uh, theory part also so true, true, that true, is the reason true, true sir okay so now in this case what you like to do first will you like to give hydration therapy and wait yes we can yes sir we will give hydration therapy what okay, do you mean so by hydration therapy madam Uh, has to uh, drink a lot of water like more than th uh, 3.5 liters in a day and uh, yes that sir. will be evacuated by the opposite kidney 
Yes, sir. So how do you uh, assure that it goes in this kidney? Yes. Sir. Patient should have a urine output of at least two point five liter per day. <laughs> no, the the concept of hydrotherapy was absolute. It is absolutely obsolete. Let's not yes. talk of hydrotherapy at all. Rather, we should talk of hydrotherapy only to condemn it. You see, because the example that I like to give is that if there is a traffic jam on the road, we don't send more cars on the road. We divert the cars. So same way, if there is a traffic jam of the stone, we don't send more water there. Okay. We would want to uh, divert the urine for that kidney and probably place a stent if I if would totally. I would totally agree with sir. And in fact, I would like to give you a nice example. There was a man who came to RG and he had a left upper ureteric stone. And uh, he said, one friend of mine told me to have beer. And if you see his two different sonographies or CT scan, one, the stone was nicely in the upper ureter with mild hydronephrosis. And after three months of having beer, it was a grossly hydronephrotic kidney. <laughs> So, so what was happening and he was... reported a perirenal urinoma yes sir of, yes sir uh, in in rg we have reported sir himendra has reported yes, a perinephric yes. uh, urinoma because of excessive yes. hydrotherapy there is yes. a paper which we have reported yes, yes. sir so uh, uh, means the only role for iv fluid in a patient presenting with colic what is the when will you start iv fluids Only if the patient is vomiting. Correct. Correct. Okay. Anybody who can take orally should be given orally. <coughs> okay. So a patient presenting with colic, the treatment, what is the role of antispasmodics? Shall I answer them? It will decrease the pain and uh, it will also help in... Uh, Passing the calculus. No, madam. I again would disagree Di with you. Diclofenac is evacuation the... happens by peristaltic activity of the ureter. So we don't want to block the peristaltic activity of the ureter. And we have better painkillers now than antispasmodics. So although antispasmodic would be a very good painkiller, it is better to give other painkillers which do not hamper the peristalsis of the ureter. So a patient presenting to you with colic, if there is no fever, if the pain is not very severe, patient is not vomiting, then you would put the patient on uh, alpha blocker if indicated, a painkiller and oral hydrotherapy, oral hydration, not even hydrotherapy, oral hydration. That is it. Nothing more. Means you do not need antibiotics, you do not need uh, uh, IV fluids, you do not need antispasmodics. So now you are given the treatment, whatever treatment you want to give, and the stone has not come out. So how many days you will? Patient says that he will ask you a direct question. So doctor, I don't have now pain. So in this case, how many days you will advise him to wait? Uh, sir, at least three weeks, sir. At least three weeks. Not more no. than uh, two weeks. Not more than three weeks. Why three weeks? Why not more than two weeks, bhai? Uh, so the first signs of uh, kidney damage can uh, appear if if it if the kidney has hydronephrosis. If the hydronephrosis if nephrosis persisting persisting more than two weeks, then the uh, kidney damage starts to. If the stone is impacted, there should not be waiting period more than two weeks. So another thing. The answer what to are... this question, sir, what I feel will be that the decision will be based on patient symptom, uh, patient, uh, hydronephrosis, and whether the stone is moving or not. Suppose for discussion's sake, we had a stone at, say, L3 level. At the end of two weeks, you reassess. Now it has come over the sacrum. Hydronephrosis has not increased. Patient is comfortable. Now, do you want to intervene? No, you will wait two more weeks. OK. But yes, it was at L3 level. And after two or three weeks, you still feel that it has remained at L3 level. Now, in this patient, waiting further probably is not going to help. 
So the decision will be based on patient symptoms, whether the heteronephrosis is increasing, whether the stone is moving. If and based on these three, you take a call whether you want to wait further. There is no cut off ki do hafte baad nuksan hone wala hai. Correct, sir. I, I, what we usually tell in our practice, which we used to follow in RG also, Pankaj sir is quite aware of that. If there is pain, fever, vomiting, you know, you just come back. We used to tell the patient. True. So we, we would tell that, okay, observe. But if there is severe pain, fever, vomiting, not able to retain anything, there are chills, you just come back to uh, immediately intervene. And otherwise, you follow up with the scan, like sir said. If it is moving, okay, we can wait further. Otherwise, you need to intervene. Or, or, yes, upper sir, urethric sir. Stone, or upper urethric stone, um, I may not be probably, I, I, I am treating the patient of upper urethric stone slightly by a different way. The alpha, alpha receptors more commonly present in the lower ureter and there are sparse alpha receptor present in upper ureter also. True. So there are adequate literature that the alpha blockers can be used in upper ureter for stone. The only the incidence of spontaneous passage of ureter, ureteric stone, which is in upper ureter, is comparatively very less, that is 20 to 20 percent near about. For such type of patient, what we do in our practice is we will start medical exposure therapy and start planning for ureteroscopy in the same day. So, you know, hope that some if that stone comes from upper ureter to the mid ureter or lower ureter, as we don't have flexible ureteroscopy. The, it will be easier for me as a surgeon to tackle the stone in the lower ureter by a semi-rigid ureteroscope and such things happen in many times in my practice. True. <laughs> Absolutely right. So now if the stone has not come out, Miraj, what you will offer this patient? Uh, we will offer a URS cell to him, sir. Only URS? Mm -hmm. Or an, a flexible uh, uh, When you're going inside, what do you like to do? Uh, Remove uh, all of all the stones. Yeah. Yes, so, sir. RIRS? Flexible? Uh -huh. Now, if suppose this stone comes out, what you'll do? Suppose the stone comes out, then we will plan for an RIRS uh, for this patient, sir. Anything else you can do? Um, yes, sir. Yeah, it's a radiolucent stone, so uh, it's a uric acid stone. So, so what? It, it may... is nine millimeter stone. Hounsfield unit is, I think, two fifty or three fifty. Yes, so, with uh, it will be uh, for ESWL uh, focusing might be uh, not be there. No, sonography guide. Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, one the centimeter only, lower only, can be... Only, only thing which is going against ESWL is what? Lower calyx uh, stone. One centimeter. Yeah. But, but you don't know about the length of the... Uh, the infant developed pelvic angle. Infant the, uh, and all these things. Infant development, yeah. Fragmented so, stone, sir. Fragmentation yes. of stone too hard and too soft. Both are contraindication for the lithotripsy. Yes. If, if the stone is too soft, then also the fragmentation is very less. Yes. And if stone yes. is too hard, that is more than 1000, then that is again a contraindication for lithotripsy. So here the handful unit of stone is near about 250. Either the, the, definitely that will not be seen on the X-ray and under fluoroscopy. So we have to use this ultrasonography for the guidance. Availability of ultrasonography guidance and experience of doing the ultrasonography guidance ESWL is comparatively not easily available everywhere. One another thing is fragmenting the soft stone with lithotripsy is in such situation is slightly less uh, successful. So better considering the size of the stone, which is nine millimeter, and having two more small stone in the upper calyx. We have to tackle by one way. That is ideal way is RIRS. That's what I think. Yes, yes, yes. We are just asking them different ways of doing it and finding out what are the indications, contraindication, and then come to conclusion in this case, what is best for this patient. 
because they should be aware of all different modalities and to decide which is best for a patient. So that is why one number is that we give some days of hydration therapy. If the patient is, doesn't have much pain, if the stone is not coming out, then do URS and RIRS. If the stone comes out, you have got two options of doing RIRS or ESWL. In this case, ESWL is less effective because the stone is little less Hounsfield unit. The chances are there that the gravels may, it may not break totally. Second thing, lower cell stone. And third thing is expertise because ultrasonography guided localization may be difficult. So these are the three important things. So the RIRS is better in this case. Maheshwari ji, aapko, Uddedar ji, aapka kuch comment in this? Because I am not uh, doing ESWL. Um, Dr. Maheshwari <laughs> is expert in this. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with what Dr. Gita has said that if it if we suspect a mucoid stone, then obviously uh, ESWL is out. But uh, Dr. Gita, the Hounsfield unit written here is 525. Lower cholesterol, yeah. Huh. So, uh, and I was really thinking for this patient from the point of view of a uric acid stone. And I think at 525, it should work fairly well. So uh, in this patient, I would, if uh, uh, say the uretic stone comes out on its own spontaneously, then uh, the treatment of choice for this patient will be ESWL with uh, uh, say uh, continued medical management for uric acid calculi. Uh, yeah. The major advantage of RIRS will be that the smaller stones will also be removed at the same time as Dr. Gita just said. Yeah, I think small stones very difficult to localize. Correct? Mm. Even son of... Yes, yes. Uh, yes, also, yes, yes. Small yes, stones yes. come, we will be like three and three and a half millimeter stone, we won't be able to fragment on ESW. Correct. Yeah. Yes, correct. I, I, I agree with Pankar sir. I'm sorry for I have mistaken that I achu, which is no, Sorry, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Two, because it was uh, in the uretic stone is I think 250. 250, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, 523, lower calcium, yes. Yeah. So I think now we have got other two cases, but uh, uh, two hours are over. Uh, shall we conclude Conclude over here? Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> so thank you very much to all of you, I think. Senior of five, just show, kya hai? A 35 year old gentleman with left flank pain two days. With fever, nausea, vomiting. With okay, hysteria. just show them. Creatin 2.6, count 16,000. Cells are innumerable. Yeah. Just show them which are the stones. We finally ask them how, we, how they will manage. Yeah, this that is, is one stone. Left. left ureter. That is a one upper uretic calculus. And then there is a lower cell stone. And the lower ureter also. Yeah, so left lower ureter, left upper ureter, and mm -hmm. left lower cell stone. Yes. Sir, we'd like to uh, do a stenting for this patient, and if stenting fails, then put a left-sided PCN for this patient, since the patient is uh, in, in acute infective phase, and his creatinine is raised, uh, maybe in an acute kidney injury. Okay. Fine. So first, you like to do PCN. What are the advantages of doing PCN in this patient? Uh, if at all we want to tackle the uh, stone at the later sitting, then we can use the same uh, track as a to dilate for PCN. Beta, first of all, tell us why you want to do PCN. So what is the uh, advantage? So since, of uh, uh, so since it's an infective, uh, this thing we need to uh, drain the system first. Uh, on that side. So you, you, uh, the problem with the, uh, since there is a distal uretic stone, maybe the stent uh, may not may not go, a guide wire may not pass through the, by the side of the stone. Uh, so, and uh, also there is uh, one more obstruction, at, there may be one more obstruction at a higher level. So if we do a PCN, we can uh, uh, bypass both the uh, obstructive. Uh, so sonography can, go done, can be done under local anesthesia at a bedside, correct? 
Yes, yes, yes. Bad side. Yeah. So ultrasonography guided PCN can be done very easily, right? Yes. While this yes, will require yes. anesthesia, chances are very high that you may not be able to pass guide wire. It may go in so because it's difficult to put the stent, and the yes, drainage sir. is much better with the PCN. PCN, yes. Correct. Then you yes. can even assess the in some cases the function also. Yes. Correct. Yes, then yes. later on you can use it as a mini pod track if it is properly placed because uh, both the stones are not very small and they are appearing very hard stone. So you may you know it may be easier to remove it with the mini pod rather than going yes. from below. Mm -hmm. So you can do URS from below. And the upper track, with that you can do mini PCNL and remove both the stones. Yes. Fine. Yes. Yes. Okay. Achin, छोड़ने वाला नहीं है. बोलो. Partial staghorn calculus. PCNL. Yeah. <laughs> so in this you will do PCNL. There are chances that you might have to do multiple hmm. puncture. Hmm? It may be a bifid. We don't know. It may be a bifid system also. Hmm. Uh, Uncle Bhai, something to comment on colon? You have been Saying yes, rather I was looking more yeah. intently at the right colon. Means I was going to ask you, is this a solitary kidney? No, I don't remember. We don't have um so Achin, what the is that? Colon you is the remember? Bit more medial means uh, no, that is when no, you will see it this way when there is a absent kidney. Yeah. We'll find out. We'll find yes. out yes. in that case. Right. So these are the different cases. I hope we have learned us with Dr. Maheshwari. Thank you very much, Pankaj Bhai. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. good night. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. Good night. Thank you, Jitesh, sir.